Hello viewers, uh, welcome back to this course. So in the last classes or the last lecture, we have started with the Fourier series and then we have done some examples finding the Fourier series of the function and then we also discussed that the complex Fourier series. But for the Fourier series, we have considered that the function is a periodic function and if it has a period 2L. Now, today I will define some other properties of the Fourier series and this is a very important phenomenon. So, today I will discuss with the Gibbs phenomenon. So, what is this Gibbs phenomenon? Phenomenon Gibbs tells you that because uh, when we deal with the Fourier series, if the function is continuous, then you will see that the Fourier series give you the uh, nice approximation for that function. But what about the function? So, it says that if, if the function f x has, has a discontinuity at any point say x and x belongs to the interval minus L to L because I am considering that my function f x is a periodic function of period 2 L defining from minus L to L. So, in that case it say that then the my function my Fourier series series will converge to the function to this value. So, what is this value? It is divided by 2. So, this is where the Fourier series will converge and if you see this one like suppose I just define a function. So, let us take one function here. Suppose for the time being I define a function like minus 1 and it is 1 and it is minus 1. So, suppose it is minus 1 and the value of the function is 1 and I am defining this one for minus L and in this is plus L, this is small l. So, in that case if you see then the function at discontinuity at x equal to 0. So, in this case my function f x has discontinuity at x equal to 0. So, if I in this case if I want to find out the Fourier series of this function from minus L to L, you will see that the Fourier series is convergent for this function at this value and this value, but for the fun value at x equal to 0, this will converge to the Fourier series will converge to will converge to f x plus 1. So, this is the right hand limit I am taking. So, I am taking the right hand limit, right hand limit is minus 1. So, in this case it is minus 1 and f of x minus 1. So, this is I am basically I am considering this one. So, that value is 1 and from here if I see then 1 minus 1 equal divided by 2. So, that is value is 0. So, in this case if I find the Fourier series of this function then by the Gibbs phenomenon the series will converge to 0 at x equal to 0. So, otherwise the series is uh, convergent wherever the function is a continuous function. So, if I want to define the Fourier series of this function you will see that the Fourier series in this case will look like like something and then this one and then like this type of thing. So, it depends upon that how many uh, terms you are taking the Fourier series because the Fourier series you know that it contains the infinite number of terms, but whenever we want to find out the approximation only in that case we know that we are considering only few terms of the uh, series. So, it as soon we, uh, we keep increasing the number of terms in the series the our approximation will be better and better and I am saying that the once we are increasing the number of 
terms of the series, the approximation will be look like this one. So, this is because of the given by the Gibbs. Now, we define, so after that, another thing I want to define today is that in the last class we have discussed the complex form of the of the Fourier series. So, in that case we have defined the function. So, my function f x is, is continuous having a finite number of discontinuity and x is defined from minus l to l then I know that in the complex form we have written the series as C n e to the power i n pi x by L, where my C n is the coefficient and that was we have defined by 1 over L minus L to L f x e to the power minus i n pi x pi l. So, this one we have done in the last class. So, now it is 2 l and n is from 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 and so on. Now, and I know that my C n in this case is a n minus i b n by 2 and C minus n is just the conjugate of this one by 2. Now, in this case what we will do? We define we take 2 pi by t and define this one as a omega where t I am just taking the capital T is the fundamental period of the function f x. So, this is a fundamental period I am taking. Fundamental period is that I, I, as I told you that the function if the function has a period pi then 2 pi is also its period 3 pi also period then the minimum of that one is the fundamental period. So, I am taking t here. So, this omega in that case is called angular frequency. Angular frequency and from here like suppose I have a uh, uh, in my function I have a period 2 L. So, in that case if I have 2 pi by 2 L then it will be pi by L. So, this is called the angular frequency for or we call it fundamental angular frequency <coughs> for this function f. And in that case, so after defining this fundamental frequency, my I can plot then the graph corresponding to n omega because omega is fixed here. So, n omega means I am taking the value of n 1, 2, 3 whatever the value we are taking minus 1, minus 2 and then I take magnitude of C n. So, magnitude of C n I would if I plot this one then this is called is called frequency spectrum. of the function f x. So, then it is called the frequency spectrum and I know that my C n in this case is a n minus i b n by 2. So, from here I can define the magnitude of C n. So, this is a n square plus b n square under the root by 2. So, this one is the magnitude of C n. So, I know that I can find out the magnitude of this one and then if I plot this one with respect to n omega and then whatever the form we get is called the frequency spectrum of the function. 
So, this is called the frequency spectrum. Now, I am also going to define a, another uh, very important topic uh, identity and that is called the Parcival. identity. So, this is the Parseval identity. So, it says that my suppose I have a function f x and that is defined for the interval minus L to L and in that case I have the Fourier series as A 0 plus summation n from 1 to infinity A n cos n pi x by L plus B n sin n pi x by L. So, this is my Fourier series I have. Then what I do is what I do? So, this is the Fourier series I am having and this Fourier series I know is convergent to the function f x for all value of x in the interval and wherever the function has discontinuity then the by the Gibbs Fino it will converge to the, the average value of the left hand and right hand limit at that point. So, that is we already know. So, now from here what I do is that I multiply the function f x both side of the equation 1 and then divide by L and then integrate with respect to x from minus L to L. So, this is I am doing. So, the same thing will on the right hand side I am dividing by L integrating from minus L to L f x dx. So, this will happen here plus now I take the summation n from 1 to infinity and integrating. So, this will be a n by L minus L to L f x cos n pi x by L dx plus b n by L minus L to L f x sin n pi x by L dx. So, this is uh, after multiplying by x or f x and then dividing by L and then integrating with respect to x from minus L to L. So, from here the left hand side I can write as this one minus L to L. So, f x whole square d x and on the right hand side I will get a n a 0. So, minus L to L f x d x over 1 by L plus cos n pi x by L d x plus similarly b n 1 over L minus L to L f x sin n pi x by L dx. So, this is we have defined. Now, if you see from here that what is the value of this one? This integral. So, this integral if you know then my a naught is always equal to 1 over 2 L from minus, infin minus L to L f x dx. So, this is given to me. So, from here I can say that this integral because this is the integral will be gives me 2 a naught. Similarly, I know that what is the value of this integral. So, this integral is a n and if you see this one, this integral is b n. So, from here I can write that 1 over L minus L to L f x square d x 
that is equal to so from here it will becomes 2 a naught square plus summation n from 1 to infinity so this is given to me so now a n and this is also a n so from here i can write this as a a n square plus and this will become the b n square so from here i get a one equality and that equality is this one so this equality is called the parcels e parcels identity so this identity basically gives you that the that on the right hand side we have only the summation corresponding to the coefficients and left side is the square of the function so this type of identity is used to for the large number of application so this identity i will use for that how this can be used let's start with the example so what i do i have a example fx is equal to mod x i am just taking where x in this case i am taking from minus pi to plus pi and from here i want to find after calculate this one find summation 1 plus 3 square 5 square 7 square and so on i want to find the value of this summation and value of this summation 1 over 3 raised to power 4 1 over 5 raised to power 4 1 over 7 raised to power 4 and so on so let us see how the Fourier series is going to help us to find out the summation of this series. So now in this case, so what I do is the my function is well defined. So if you see that this function is, I am taking this is my 0 and suppose this is minus pi and this is pi, so my, this is my function. So this is a function mod x and then this is well defined from minus pi to pi and also it is given that the function x plus 2 pi is equal to fx. So from here I can say that this function is a periodic function. So if you see the periodic function then this function will be can be extended for the whole real line and this will be the corresponding function. So in this case you can see that this function is continuous function. So in this case, if I take the Fourier series, that Fourier series will converge to the function at all the point value of x. So from here, and also I want to say that the function f(x) in this case is an even function because from here you can say that this is equal to this one because it is a mod x, so it is an even function. So with the help of the even function, I know that if I write the Fourier series of this function, then it will be only a 0 plus summation n from 1 to infinity a n cos n x. Now my a 0, if I want to define the a 0, so my a 0 will be 1 over 2 pi from minus pi to pi and f x is mod x dx but it is a even function so i can write as a 2 pi from 0 to pi and from 0 to pi mod x will be x so it will be dx so this will cancel out and from here this will be pi square by 2 1 over pi so that gives me only pi by 2 so that is the value of a naught now I wanted to find the value of a n. So a n is 1 over pi minus pi to pi mod x cos n x dx. So this is even function cos is also in function. From here I can write as a 2 over pi 0 to pi it will be x cos n x dx. 
So, to find the integration of this integral, I can apply the uh, by parts rule and from here it will become 2 over pi. So, I can define as a x and cos pi x, the integration of cos pi x is sin pi x divided by pi, not it is, it is n. So, it is not a pi, it is n. Putting the limit and then minus 0 to pi and this will be again sin n x by n d x. Now, if I put the limit for this one, so I know that the pi if will put sin pi 0, sin 0 is 0. So, from here it will be only 2 by pi and then inside I will get minus. So, this 1 n will come out and I have to integrate from 0 to pi sin n x. So, this one I can write as a minus cos n x by n and then putting the limit because sin n x if I want to find out the integration of this one. So, it will be minus cos n x divided by n and putting the limit 0 to 2 pi, 0 to pi. So, from here <coughs> now I can define from here. So, this n I can take common. So, this will give me only 2 over pi n square and inside I will get cos n pi minus cos 0. I am putting the limit here. So, from here I will get 2 over pi n square. Now, cos n pi I know that when n is equal to 1, the cos pi is minus 1. When n is equal to 2, cos 2 pi is 1. So, from here this will be always equal to minus 1 raised to power n minus 1. So, now this one equal to 0 when n is e 1 and this is equal to minus 4 by n square pi when n is odd number. So, that is the value of the coefficient a n. So, if I use this coefficient then from here I can write my Fourier series for the mode x. So, this will be a naught, a naught was by pi by 2. So, it is pi by 2 plus summation n from 1 to infinity and this is, so here I am taking n as a e 1 because n, sorry n is not even odd, where n is odd and then it will be minus 4 over n square pi cos n x. So, that is my series. <coughs> so, from here I can define this series. Now, I can also write this series as because my n is a odd value. So, from here I can define my n as 2 k minus 1. So, where k is 1, 2, 3 and so on. So, from here I can define my mod x is equal to pi by 2 plus k from 1 to infinity minus 4. Instead of n I can put so, it is 2 k minus 1 square and then it is cos So, it is cos 2 k minus 1 x. So, that is the series.
So, this series is that is the Fourier series for my function mod x. So, further I can write as pi by 2. So, this one I can take outside. One over two k minus one square, and then it is cos two k minus one x. This one. Now, from here, so I call it equation number one. Now, what, what I do is now try to find the value of the function at, so let putting x equal to 0 in the equation number 1. So, on the left hand side my function f x is mod x and that is 0 and on the right hand side if I put the limit in this Fourier series, so that gives me the series gives me pi by 2 minus 4 by pi and this is the summation k from 1 to infinity 2 k minus 1 whole square and this will be cos 0 because x will be 0, so it will be cos 0 and that is always 1. So, from here I can say that from the equation number 1 I will get pi by 2 minus 4 by pi and that is the summation k from 1 to infinity 1 over 2 k minus 1 whole square. And what is this? I can take this one on the left hand side. So, it will be minus pi by 2. So, it will be minus pi by 2 and then dividing by this one. So, from here into minus pi by 4. So, this will come because I will take this one on the left side and then dividing by this one. So, it will be pi by 4. Other side I will get this value. So, k when k is equal to 1, its value will be 1. When k will be 2, it will be 3 square. 1 over 5 square, 1 over 7 square and so on. And this will be, so I will cancel out this one. So, it will be pi square by 8. So, that is 1 plus 1 over 3 square plus 1 over 5 square plus 1 over 7 square and so on. So, from here I can find out the C, sum of this series. If you see the series, series is the 1 plus 1 over 3 square plus 1 over 5 square and 1 over 7 square and so on. So, with the help of the Fourier series and by the property that it is giving, it is converging for the function wherever the function is continuous, by the help of this one I am able to find the summation of this series. Luckily in this function, in this case the function was continuous and I was able to find the value of the function directly from there. Now, we have to find the another series. So, in that case, I will use the Parseval identity. So, now I know that from the Parseval identity, I know that 1 over pi minus pi to pi mod x square dx should be equal to 2 a naught square plus summation k from 1 to infinity and this will be a n square. So, that we already know because in this case my b n is 0. So, by the Parseval identity I should have this value. Now, let us see what will happen. So, from here just I want to find what is the value of this one. So, it is 1 over pi and from minus pi to pi and mod x square is x square dx. So, it is a even function. So, from here I can write 
1 over pi 2 times 0 to pi x square dx. So, it will give me 2 over pi and then it will be pi q by 3. So, this will be 2 pi square by 3 pi square by 3. So, that is the value of on the left hand side of the parseware identity. Now, a naught we already know was pi by 2. So, in that case my a naught square will be pi square by 4 and now I want to find what is the value of a n square. So, my a n square is if you see the a n was this, this value. So, this is my a n. So, this is my a n. So, in that case if I take the square it will be 4 square n raised to power 4 pi square only these things will change. So, it will be minus 4 n square pi whole square. So, that will be 16 over n raised to power 4 pi square. So, by the property of the Parseval identity, now I can write the Parseval identity. So, this will be 2 pi square by 3 is equal to 2 times pi square by 4 plus k from 1 to infinity and a n square is this one 16 over n raised to power 4 pi square. Now, I will use this one this property. So, from here I just take this one on the left side. So, it will be 2 pi square over 3 minus pi square by 2 and this will be 16 by pi square I can take common and inside you will get only k from 1 to infinity 1 over. So, n is basically 2 k minus 1. So, 2 k minus 1 raised to power 4. So, this will get. So, this also n instead of n I should write 2 k. So, this is basically 2 k minus 1 power 4. and then n square. So, from here now from if I do the calculation, so this will be 6, so it will be 4 pi square minus 3 pi square. So, that is basically pi square by 6 is equal to 16 by pi square and summation k from 1 to infinity power 4. Now, I will take this term on the left hand side. So, it will be pi square by 6 multiply by pi square by 16 and on the right hand side if you expand this one, you will see that I can write this when k is equal to 1, it is 1 when k is equal to 2, it is 2, 4 minus, so it is 3 raised to power 4, then it is 5 raised to power 4, then it is 7 raised to power 4 and so on. And on the left hand side, you will get pi raised to power 4 by 96. So, that is the summation of this series. So, this is the question we have asked that how the summation of this series will look. So, the summation for this series is pi raised to power 4 by 96. So, these are we are able to find from this one only when we are applying the Parseval identity. So, in that case the Parseval identity is very important to find out the various relation between the Fourier series and that generally is used to find out the summation of many series. Now, so after this one, so using this Parseval identity, now we will 
going to the next topic and that is called Fourier integral. Now, we know that the Fourier series is possible only when the function f x is periodic function. periodic in the interval minus L to L. So, in this case my function is periodic, but what will happen when the function is not periodic? Because in generally we do not have uh, my function, all the function are periodic function. So, in that case what will, what will do? Like I have a function, suppose I define a function like this one which is 1 when x belongs to some interval suppose I say 0 to 1 otherwise 0 when. So, this type of function. So, this is not a product function or I have an exponential function e raised to power minus x that is also not the product function in the finite interval for minus L to L. So, if I have a function which is not a product function in the finite interval then how I can find the Fourier series. So, in that case obviously, we are unable to find the Fourier series. So, if I have a function like this one minus x, then I can say that this function is periodic and having period infinity. So, that I can say that this function is a periodic function, but it is interval of the period is can be treated as a infinite infinity. So, in that case whenever the function is not periodic in the finite domain then generally we treat that function as a periodic function and it has a period infinity. So, what will happen whenever I have a because for the finite interval I know that the Fourier I can write the Fourier series of the function as this one cos n pi x by L plus b n sin n pi x by L. But what will happen in this case now? <coughs> my L is going to infinity and if the L is going to infinity then how this will treat and then in that case this summation will what is the meaning of the summation in that case whenever L is going to be infinity. So, that will that that how we can find out the Fourier series or we can say that the Fourier integral when we function is not a periodic function and its period is treated as infinity. So, these things we will do in the next class because it is going to take some time to define that how the Fourier series can be converted into the Fourier integral. So, this will we will do in the next class. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much. Thank you.